what you're seeing is the emergence of the oxygen that forms our atmosphere. The atmosphere actually built, collapsed, and then built back again. It makes these really beautiful layers. That is phenomenal. That is so cool. <laughs> We're at the 2022 Tucson Gem and Mineral Show, back with a familiar friend who we love and miss, actually, Elizabeth. So some of you may not know that she now works at the University of Arizona Museum. So tell us what you do here. Okay, so I am the exhibit specialist, which means that every single piece in our entire museum I get to lay my hands on and put it out on exhibit. Walk us through a little bit about what you would experience if you were here. We're in old Pima County Courthouse. It was actually where John Dillinger was put on trial, which is really cool. That's so cool. That's really cool. <laughs> so we have all this really cool history, but our museum is actually state of the art and completely modern. When you first walk in, you're greeted by an absolutely gigantic Arkansas quartz cluster. We have three main galleries. We have our Mineral Evolution Gallery, our Arizona Gallery, and then our Gem Gallery. And every single one of them have world-class, top quality specimens. As you go through our first gallery here, you see a gorgeous Stibnite. So I got the opportunity to go through the museum. You really could spend hours and hours there. One thing is just the complete thoughtfulness of the design and layout and the story that it tells. We took a page out of Dr. Robert Hazen's theory of mineral evolution, where you start off with, say, the 50 or 60-ish minerals that we first find all over the galaxy, and then we expand upon the way more than 50 or 60 that you find here on Earth. And we're the only planet in our solar system that has the incredible diversity of minerals that we have. Tons of gem crystals from pegmatites, some extraordinary examples of them. And so we kind of go through like, why do we have all of those crazy minerals? So like tectonics, our rock cycle, even biological cycles that all contribute to what we see. One of the cooler stories here is that there was a fire in Jerome that burned for 20 years and when they went back in it was an entirely new suite of minerals was inside due to the heat and the lack of oxygen from the fire. One of my favorite pieces in the museum is actually on the wall rather than in a case. It is a huge slab of what geologists call BIF, but it stands for banded iron formation. And it's actually where you get banding of hematite and magnetite. It makes these really beautiful layers. But what's unique about it is that it formed during the great oxygenation event. So what you're seeing is the emergence of the oxygen that forms our atmosphere. And as the atmosphere actually built, collapsed, and then built back again. That is phenomenal. That is so cool. <laughs> also in our mineral evolution gallery, we have a wall of fossils. And one of my favorites in our wall of fossils is actually a Allosaurus femur. It was actually cut in half, or it may have been broken in half, whatever it is, they decided to polish the two pieces that were broken. And you can see where instead of bone marrow inside of this femur, it actually is crystallized quartz. It's super cool. I've never seen another dinosaur bone like it. Meteorites and tektites, some of my favorites. One of the cool things that you guys have is a lunar sample from the Apollo 15 mission. Yes. Talk about that, that was really okay. cool. So we just caught it as in two days ago. <laughs> some of you may know that Arizona's senator is an astronaut actually. <laughs> he came to our museum and he went, do you have a moon rock? And we went, no, but most museums don't have a moon rock. It is incredibly difficult to get one. And so he goes, well, I'm gonna make that happen. It was really crazy, but yeah, so we got our new moon rock and it is apparently the largest moon rock that they actually loan out. You go through mineral evolution and the history of minerals as it relates to the earth, and then you go straight into Arizona. It's such a special state as it relates to gems. Yeah. As you come around the corner, you're going to see the mining Stope. When you walk into our Arizona gallery, you're greeted with what we call the stope. And it is actually a recreation of the interior of the mine at Bisbee with real mineral specimens set into this recreated rock. 
beautiful azurite and malachite specimens, as well as our calcite and aragonite. From there, we kind of explore like local collectors, some of the clubs, like what it takes to be a rock hound even. We have a wall of just kind of like the big minerals in Arizona. So it includes wolfenite, some quartzes, and some major calcites. I always like to point out this piece, number nine. One of the really cool ones, it's not as flashy as a lot of them, but it's near and dear to my heart, is a little blue tinted, bird's nest calcite. And what's really interesting about those is they're a very unique formation where they form and it makes this kind of like little cup in the cave. Gravel will sit in this little cup and get coated by calcite as the water flows through it. So it tumbles it and they look like little eggs in a bird's nest. Yeah, like a little robin's egg. Yeah, little robin's yeah. eggs. Yeah. And so then we go into our mining wall area and on the mining wall, we have some big pieces of like ore so that people can actually see and experience what some of the things are that we look for when mining here in the state. My favorite piece on that whole wall shows these two kind of flowery looking flat spots in it. And those are actually drill scars. They were drilling these exploratory drill holes. They ran into this big flat piece of copper. And what happens is, is that drill bit hits the copper and swirls it up into the drill bit. And what's funny is that miners actually hate it. And it's because it ruins the drill bit. Yeah. And if they hit it twice, it means they actually have to dig down to it, remove it, and then keep drilling past it. Wow. Wow. Well, we like it. We because like it. It's cool. <laughs> We're going to go into the treasury where a lot of our very beautiful gemstones reside. You see some pretty phenomenal faceted gems and actually jewelry as well. Do you have any favorites? I have a few favorites. So one of them, we have an absolutely beautiful Paraiba tourmaline necklace. It is the most Paraiba of Paraibas. And then we also have a really cool fossilized clamshell that has been opalized. And it's in this really beautiful ring setting. Our gem gallery, some California jade. And here we have a recreation of a gem pocket out of Afghanistan. So all of these different crystals all came out of a single pocket. When we are in our gem gallery, once you're kind of through all of just the incredible eye candy, there's a carving that I think is just really precious. And it's Julia the Toad. And Aww. she is a carving that came out of Edar Oberstein that was carved by an extremely famous carver. And it is made out of a single piece of bicolor tourmaline. Oh my gosh. And she is just so detailed. Like she's yeah. so like, I hate to say warning, but she's this <laughs> cute toad. <laughs> One of the, the pieces, I struggle to even say pieces, it's like a masterpiece that has caught a lot of attention this year is an extremely unique, detailed piece of art. So we got in, not that long ago actually, a gemstone tapestry. And so it is made of over 26,000 gemstones. So the gemstones that are in the tapestry are colorless diamonds, red rubies, green emeralds, and there's actually yellow, pink, and blue sapphires. It is held together by 18 karat gold. I think it's like 15.9 kilos of gold. Wow. Which is incredible. I don't know what that is in pounds. I know the whole tapestry itself is over 40 pounds. Wow. It actually took three of us to get it into the case and support it so that it wouldn't collapse on its own weight. It definitely makes a statement as you're walking through the museum. And you can just kind of walk back and forth in front of it all day and enjoy the incredible sparkle. What's really cool about my job is that even though I'm not doing like the official unboxings on our channel, I kind of get to do my own unboxing. So we get a lot of loans and donations into the museum. We you know, often don't even know what these pieces are going to look like when they come in. And so we get to have that really cool, like initial unboxing ourselves. This is a random box I have picked up off the shelf. I don't actually know what is in the box. So here we go. So we have a single piece. So this is a wolfenite from China. You see some really red crystals that are a lot more chunky and then it kind of fades into these more like very window pane thin crystals here along this other edge. And it is extremely fragile. Eventually this will probably go into a wolfenite display or it'll go into a worldwide display case. A typical day for me if we're like putting in a new exhibit is 
We lay out everything, decide what's actually going on each self in the exhibit, making them look like the most attractive angle that you can possibly find. And then we actually have to design the lighting that goes with it. Each of the lights that we have in the museum is dimmable, panable, and you can actually focus it and create a spotlight on each and every individual crystal that we have. Basically every piece has its own custom display. It's really rewarding and it's actually a lot of fun for me. So it, it's kind of like getting to be your own artist and paint with light. Finally, we have our incredible silver nuggets. And if you can't get an idea of how big they are, <laughs> the middle one is over 400 pounds and is 75% silver. And they were found with metal detectors in 2018. It just shows people that you never know what is still out there. Okay, Elizabeth, obviously you know that we often do a closer look at the end of these episodes. Um, the museum, I think, as a whole deserves a closer look, so let's take a look. Elizabeth, it's been so good to see you. We really miss you. Your museum is incredible and we feel so grateful to have you show us through it. If you're in Arizona, you definitely need to come by because there's no way that we could show you all of these in one video. That's all for today, but don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Bye!